Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About That. My name is Fran Thomas. I am one of the co-hosts for this show. This week, you're in for a treat. It's a conversation between Fran, Ted, and one of his students, Avery Decker. Y'all, I am so grateful every time when a student, a current student, is willing to step into this space and share their very brave story. And Avery has a very brave story to share. So thank you for listening with kindness, with love, with compassion, encouragement, and prayer. You will enjoy learning a little bit more about who Avery is and her time here with us at Union and how good God has been to her. All right. We appreciate you guys. Enjoy the show. All right. Hello, Ted Cluck. Hey, Fran. <laughs> it's good to be back. It's been a minute, it's for, been a minute. for you and me on this show, oh, hasn't it? Oh, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I'm here, too. I love it. And I love it, too. And we have a guest. We have a guest in the house. We sure do. One of my students. I know, and I think that's super fun. Hello, yep. Avery Decker. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us who you are, why in the world. Well, we're not going to ask you why in the world are you here, because we're going to get into that, but... What do you want the listeners to know about you, Avery? Okay, yeah. So my name's Avery, Avery Decker. I am a junior journalism major here at Union. Uh-huh. Shout out, Ted Cluck. Yeah, amen. Abe's in, Abe's in two of my classes right now, which, like, we, I, I fear cluck fatigue. You know, <laughs> like, you might be a little tired of this, so uh, I, I want to tread lightly on that. But What's the, your, what classes, what, what are these two classes? So I'm in Cardinal and Cream. Oh, yeah, My yeah. first year of that, and then I'm in Mag and Feature. Love. Dude, she is murdering Cardinal and Cream right now, writing really great sports stories, which we have a hard time getting people to do. She so, loves this, though. Um, it's a really good skill set, and watching the watching the talent pop oh. uh, is one of my favorite things. Like when I when you it. see somebody do something that they were made to do, it yeah. it feels really good. So, yeah, uh, it's been a fun journey with Ave, and and it was one of those journeys for Ann Thomas that you and I both have kids and mm-hmm. kids who have gone through here, and. Um, it can it can take a while for them to find the thing that they love to do, and there right. can be some indecision and some major changes. And Ave, you and I have had some meetings in the office about um, you know what you want to do in life yeah. and what dropping classes. <laughs> I think I've I've done more drop ad slips for Avery Decker than maybe she's in the Hall of Fame for that. So it's informal. I've but, had a uh, lot of meetings with Cluck. Like yeah. I think we even talked about dropping journalism as a major I at was one point. Say. We did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And that would have been okay. Like honestly all of this happens in the service of the student, yeah. right? So as, as sad as I am sometimes when people drop my major, like if it's truly best for you, that's what needs to happen. Yeah. But but thankfully for all of us, that wasn't... I'm uh, still here. She's yeah, still here. Yeah, she's still here. She's hanging in. Did you know that's what you wanted to major in when you came to Union? Or were you like, I have no idea what I want to do? I think it was the end, towards the end of my senior year where I was like, journalism sounds right up my alley. I love yeah. it. Um, but that I actually had a high school English teacher tell me that I would make it nowhere oh. as a journalism major. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Hey, can you, uh, just for my own edification, <laughs> can you talk about that for like 30 seconds? Yes. Well, how did that come about? So I feel we like were, that's a bad thing to say to someone. Yes. <laughs> we were doing a little activity in class. Um, we were all writing about what our future professions and what we wanted mm-hmm. to be and our majors in college. And, you know, I raised my hand, I was like, I think I'm gonna do journalism. And mm. um, I was like, but I'm not sure, I'm leaning more towards this other one, which I can't even remember what it yeah. was at this point. And she was like, oh, thank God, cause you know, you're not gonna make it anywhere with that. Like no money, you know, the it, the career's dying. Oh. And um, oh. so I beg I, to differ. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I changed my major, I think like five or six times. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I get that, I understand that. And I, Ted, how would, how should somebody, if, if, if you see a student, if you were that high school teacher, yeah. how should you say, I, how should you approach that with a student? Because now you're like, I just kind of want to go, na 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 na, look at me now. Yeah. yeah. You know, your words didn't have any power over me. But if, right or wrong like if you see it or you don't you know what should you say i mean to some degree it's not your place right in the sense that i have a very distinct feeling that my job is to teach you how to write and to make much of the lord Mm -hmm. like it's really not my job to say 
what you can and can't do because Fran Thomas, 0% of people who knew me in college mm-hmm. would have gambled on <laughs> me writing all these books and becoming a journalism professor yes. at a college. Like yes. no one would have taken that bet. Yeah. And so I, I'm very slow to tell a student what their ceiling is, you know, because I may not know. The The talent may pop after they leave well, here. That's exactly you what know? I was thinking. Like you, you may not really start hitting a good stride until you're 30 years old or that's something. That's it. Everybody develops at a different rate. Yeah. And yeah. our job is to, to let you sit with the greats which is why we read the greats in my classes and you get to sit with it and you get to see the gold standard and then give you reps, right? And you have, you're somebody who I think has really benefited from the reps mm-hmm. and you have to decide to do it. And it's risky, right? Because we're making product. We're not just writing papers. Like oh, yeah. papers don't have an audience, but yeah. we're, we're making real product, which takes a certain amount of courage which I think you have in droves in part because of your background, Mm -hmm. right? So you, you came to union in a little bit different circumstance. I think it's safe to say than most of our students. (laughs) And it's a good thing we met each other because I'm kind of a sucker for, for a different story. You know what I mean? And I get, I get bored with all, all the same. So um, tell us a little bit, Ave, about your story um, maybe your testimony and just how you got to union and you can be as expansive or brief as you want. And Fran and I'll just keep lobbing questions at you. Perfect. No, I'm an open book. So throw yeah. anything my way. Um, yeah. So kind of grew up in a difficult home setting, mm-hmm. I guess you could say. And, mm-hmm. um, I'll spare everybody the awful details, but let's give a little shape and contour little, of difficult. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> my parents divorced when I was about two years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have, right now, I have four siblings. Mm-hmm. Um, but through that time, my mom was remarried. A couple years later, um, we were bouncing back and forth from my dad's home to my mom's home. Mm-hmm. Um, we were below the normal economy line, so we were poor. Like, sure. you know, life was hard. And um, my dad was bouncing in and out of different houses with, you know, different girlfriends each week. Yeah. Um, But it didn't really start until like my eighth grade, right before my freshman year of high school, where my mom had left my stepdad and um, basically was just like, I'm removing you from this household. No questions asked. We're Mm. leaving. Mm. Um, Lost her job, you know, turned to drugs and alcohol. So I kind of picked up the role of being a mom Mm -hmm. to my younger sister and uh, was cooking and cleaning, finding rides to and from school. and. Mm. Mm waking my mom up for school instead of her waking me up and yeah. uh, my dad was really heavily into the drugs at this point so he had he had lost his job previously as well and um i was being taken on what i didn't know at the time was drug runs mm-hmm. uh-huh. to and from different places i was counting wads of money wow um mm. you know sometimes i had to turn my head in the car sure and bring out a scale you know whatever mm. so uh yeah, not normal circumstances whatsoever for a future freshman in high school. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you're um, so young. Yeah, mm-hmm. like that's fourteen, mm-hmm. fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. So, um, started high school. Things were, you know, I, I guess they were smooth sailing for what it was worth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what it was going through it was smooth. Relatively sailing. speaking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my dad ended up in and out of jail for a few months. So, mm-hmm. some days he wouldn't come home. You'd see it in the newspaper, yeah. last name Decker, mm. you know, yeah. whatever reason. And um, that summer before he was arrested and went to federal prison, he actually took me away from my mom's house. Uh, we were, I mean, we were living in filth and it was poor mm. and it was just dirty mm. and different men to and from our house. It was just not a safe place for a child to live. Right. Mm. Um, so, yeah, he came and got us a couple months later before I started my sophomore year. Yeah. Police officers came to my house, took my dad away. Mm. He's been locked up in uh, federal prison for about five years now. And so then COVID hit, Mm -hmm. the good old COVID. Mm. Um, And I moved in with my grandparents at the time, my dad's parents. And my grandfather actually passed away from COVID my junior year. Mm -hmm. So uh, college and anything of that sort was nowhere in my spectrum. Yes. Wasn't thinking about it. Didn't care about it. I knew I wanted to be successful. I just didn't know how I was going to get there. Yeah. Yes. Well, and you knew that you didn't want to repeat. Oh, yeah. You knew, like, that. that's all you had. Like, I know I'm not going to do that. I don't want to be yeah. that person. I don't want to live mm-hmm. that way. But any uh, any concept of college, I would imagine, would be like, 
like you said, just not even. Like in the abstract yeah, almost. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, just so far away and not even something you would entertain. Yeah. I didn't even think it was in my grasp. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, um, And the thing is, geographically, you were not super far from Jackson and mm-hmm. Union and any other college. There were probably lots of, you know, you were, you had a concept of, oh, there's universities around me nearby, mm-hmm. but. But conceptually, like yeah. eons away. Yeah. 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 So I have kind of a two-part question. Okay. Talk about the Lord and salvation, and then talk about the circumstance of getting to union and how that worked. Okay. So um, I actually came to Christ because of a boy. <laughs> okay. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was dating this Christian guy mm-hmm. in high school, and his mom actually was my Sunday school teacher. Wow. Um, um, he, we were not allowed to hang out outside of school. Yeah. And it was solely because I was not a Christian and he was. Sure. And so I would go to church, the church that he went to on Wednesday nights to mm-hmm. watch him play the drums. And it was solely just for him. I didn't, I didn't yeah. know anything that was going on around me. Well, I ended up going a lot and brought my sister along with me. And, uh, we actually got invited to go to a church retreat mm-hmm. and someone had paid in full for us to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and we both ended up getting saved at that mm. retreat. Mm. It was January twenty wow. first, twenty nineteen, mm. my sophomore year of high school. Wow! And it was the most beautiful thing. Um, my youth pastor ended up becoming one of my biggest mentors. His mom was my biggest mentor, and she's the one who actually told me about Union. Yeah. Um, so my grandmother had no clue about Union or anything like that. So his mother is the one who brought me here, and mm-hmm. is the one that sat with me in your office. Yes. Yeah. We talked about journalism. Wow, that's so crazy, eh? Yeah. Fascinating. I remember that visit. Yeah. Yeah. You gave me a book. Yep. (laughs) I did give you a book. I don't do that for everybody. Um, But it it stood out. And I remember really hoping that you would get here. And And I remember saying something to you along the lines of, don't let the sticker price scare you. If you really want to be here... We'll work it out. No, it scared me. Yeah. And, and, you know, coming from your background, how did you feel about potentially stepping into a space like Union that is a Christian private? Mm -hmm. I mean, I would imagine it just felt very foreign, maybe very safe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't imagine how that felt. Well, I would say I'm such an independent person and... I go based off what other people think. I'm such a big people pleaser. And Mm. I would say that my grandmother and, you know, a little bit of my family didn't really care where I went to college as long as I went to college. Sure. Yeah. And so um, when I applied to Union originally, I took your advice. I was Mm. like, okay, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And I was still in in the in-between. Yeah. And I remember, and I don't remember if you were on this FaceTime call with us, Fran, but I got sick the day of the orientation. Mm. And whenever I had my orientation meeting the next day, we were cranking down them numbers, yeah. crunching and crunching, and I actually got a full ride my freshman year. Oh, like the the, the bank account or the account hit zero, mm-hmm. and it was like you're you can come here, just come here. Wow. I'll figure out the rest later. Just yeah. you can come here now. Yeah, I remember who your enrollment counselor was. Yes, mm. and I remember um, I remember hearing your story just a little bit. You know. Just because it's not a common story. No, it's not. This is not for you. This is mm-hmm. not common. And the fact that, like, we all were cheering you on, we all wanted you here. We could all see the potential of what the Lord was doing in your life. Because at that time, you know, you were just a couple of years out from being saved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like, you were just. We could just see the hope. We could see the potential. And it was just like, oh, please, Lord, let her be able to come here. Mm-hmm. And then when you were able to come, it, I felt like the whole office just erupted in, yeah. in excitement and cheer. And look at you now. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. Making the most of an opportunity. And, and like those are phrases that we throw around, mm-hmm. around here. And if, mm-hmm. if we're not careful, they can become diminished just because phrases like that get right. used and leveraged in PR context and all right. that. But I, I look at Ave and, and look, I mean, we're not God and God could have used the circumstance right. of her going anywhere. But I, I think I love stories like this because a student like you, Avery, as opposed to some of our other students that come from 
just more kind of privileged, easy backgrounds. I think you appreciate this place at a deep level, even while having the the perspective that it's not perfect. I mean, I know you well enough. You're in my major. You have bad days. I have bad days. Like some days we're glum, you know, <laughs> other days we're, we're buoyant and feeling great and just feeling it. But I think for both of us at a deep level, there's an appreciation for it. You know, there's a sense of, man, the Lord could have taken me a lot of ways and I'm really glad he's allowing us to be here. Can you speak to that a little Mm -hmm. bit, just by way of perspective? Um, I think my freshman year, I really had my doubts about union when I first came, Mm -hmm. because I was struggling really bad with like immense depression. I remember that too, yeah, yeah. I I mean, I looked sick, You, I didn't Mm -hmm. have any friends, and so I think in the beginning when I first came here, I was like, what is this even for? Why am I even here? Did you feel like you didn't fit? Yes. Uh-huh. I knew I didn't fit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You knew that quickly. Mm-hmm. You felt right that off the right bat. away. Yeah. Um, this is fascinating. So how do you how do you overcome that? Or like how did you work through it? Because I would have said, peace out everybody, I'm leaving. <laughs> well, I think it's it's more common than not for people to yeah. feel that way oh, for at least oh, a yes. time in college. Yes. So how did it how did the Lord like navigate you through that? Well, I had random roommates mm-hmm. and uh I remember moving day very clearly. It was my uncle and my grandmother who moved me in and they were like, Oh, your parents seem nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Okay, so this is where it starts. Like yeah, you know, that's here right. we go. Here we that's go. Right. Like my roommates came from good homes and good mm-hmm. families and so at that moment it was decision between do I live out a lie of mm-hmm. who I'm not sure. or do I tell the truth about where I'm from? Mm. And so, um, well, let us all just evaluate that right there. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> so I told the truth about, you know, all the things that have happened. And in that moment, they became aware of my heart and like the way I acted and noticed things about me that I don't think most people would have if I didn't tell them. Mm. Um, but even then, I still suffered through a lot of the immense depression that mm. society throws at us. And um mm contemplating transfer in schools but i think i really truly think that if it wasn't for like you or your friend like i i don't think that i would have stayed just because there was a just a few people on this campus who had a glimpse of hope mm. that i could make it mm. and i had that mindset of i'm going to do better than my parents mm. oh. Like, I'm going to prove you wrong. I beat mm. the odds. Mm-hmm. And, any, and anybody that knows my story knows I beat the odds. Yes, you do. 100%. And, yeah. I'm, and I know that may be like a selfish thing to say, but. No, not at all. It's a. You can say that. Like, I did mm-hmm. it. You can yeah. say that. You there, have every right to say yeah. that. <laughs> like, I could have done a million other things, went down a million other routes, but That's I beat right. the odds. And I want to continue to beat the odds. Yes. So I didn't want to give up. Oh, I'm so thankful <laughs> that you didn't. And, um, you know, we need stories like this because. Um, we need encouragement. Yeah. We're we're just like anybody else, and and the work sometimes can feel meaningless or or like a drudge or whatever. Especially in March, I think everybody feels that way a little mm-hmm. bit in March. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the reminder of this and the reminder that these little relational moments that we find ourselves in can be mm-hmm. meaningful for somebody, um, somebody who's trying to beat the odds, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of the Lord to use us, mm-hmm. you know. And sometimes we just we forget we he's do. using all of us. Yeah, that's right. You know, he's using you Avery and other students' lives as you encourage them and remind them of what God can do in your life. I mean, you just consider all that you've overcome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're all overcoming something. That's right. All the time, but to be able to have the perspective and the wisdom and the understanding that you have at your age mm-hmm. is really incredible. I know the the Lord is taking you through it, and at yeah. times it's like, okay, I'm feel a little beaten up. I'm ready to you know move on. But um, when did you realize? Um, was it your first journalism class? When did <laughs> you realize, like, you know what, I enjoy. I really do enjoy this. I mean, you had a little inkling back there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in high school, but was can you remember a class, a project, whatever it was you were doing, you thought, oh, I really do think this is it. Because I think like we go back to that sweet spot of you've met, you came here, you have overcome, you have fought through all the obstacles and the struggles, and now you just like you're you belong. Mm-hmm. This is what you are doing, what you are meant to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When did you when did you feel like this is it? This is all going to be okay. Yeah. So I remember when I first thought of journalism as a major, I was actually watching a TV show, 
It was called The Bold Type, and it was about these three women who were in the journalism profession in some shape or form. And I was like, I want to do that. Mm. Like, that's so fun. And I always wanted to use my story, my testimony, in hopes of it benefiting somebody else. And I wanted to be able to write it. So I actually started journaling my freshman year of everything that happened. I've got about four and a half, I'm on my fifth journal Mm -hmm. of every detail of everything that's happened. Goodness. And so when I came here, I think I was undecided, then social work, took an education class, took a sports medicine class. I remember all of that. Um, Yes. Took all, yeah, just took any class I could in hopes that one of them would fill me up more than journalism. Mm. Because I was so terrified to say I'm a journalism major. And so I remember... How come was it? Like fear of failure? Fear, yeah, yeah. Fear of failure and not making it... Sure. Just not making it, not being able yes. to write or getting burned out because yes. writing was my first hobby Yeah. outside of sports. Yeah. And I didn't want my hobby to become... I get it. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like you don't want to let go of that just yet. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a sweet and special thing. Yeah, yeah I get it. Um, yeah. I think it was... I had somebody tell me that the Lord will never lead, lead you to confusion. Mm-hmm. And I think at that time, it was when I realized that journalism never led me to confusion. It led me to peace mm. and serenity. Oh. And But I was confusing myself by trying to find something yeah. that the Lord didn't have planned, uh-huh. yeah. which was taking all those boring classes yeah. that didn't do anything <laughs> for me. Yeah. So um, I remember whenever I had to turn in my first piece to Cluck, and it was about my story. Mm. And I think I cried <laughs> right after I gave it to him. I was so scared. Oh. I was like, oh, gosh, it's either going to be a hit or miss. This is going to be. No, it was this a is going to determine whether or not I'm staying in this major or I'm leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, probably that. Do you remember the paper? I do. Yeah. And, you know, you say things to students, but the, in some ways the heart wants what the heart wants. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And And I understand the fear that Ave was experiencing because you want your work to be good. Um, But I tell students often, and I think I've said it on this program, you know, we're in the, I'm in the increasing affections business. Like I want the assignment or the class to increase your affection for writing and for the Lord. And, you know, if we're on that trajectory in general, we're, we're doing a good thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And even though, this assignment may feel like a little dip or maybe I didn't love that one or whatever. As writers, I think if we're constantly trying to get better and we're experiencing joy in it, then we're doing it right. And you being an athlete, I love love to have ex-athletes or current athletes in my program because they understand that, I think, better than other kids mm-hmm. you know you you know how to fail mm-hmm. you know how to grind you know how to take coaching and not have it be a referendum on the rest of your life mm-hmm. you know these are these are good things and you have a certain amount of grit I think because of your background that will allow you to navigate those things here and in, in the career eventually mm-hmm. you know yeah. what do you want to do I mean you're a junior junior <laughs> year's almost over I know mm-hmm. senior year how do you feel about Crazy. that does it make you like when you think about leaving union one day this has been <laughs> such a safe it's been a place of refuge for you it's been so much growth and mm-hmm. people have poured into you and invested in you like I I imagine you're no different than other seniors of oh hang on a minute this isn't forever yeah I'm going to graduate. What am I going to do? How do you feel? What do you want to do? I mean, there's the realistic dream, and then there's the dream dream. That's what I tell people. I want them both. Yeah. Tell me Realistically, I don't want to go to Nashville Mm -hmm. like everybody else. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I just want somebody who takes pride in my writing and doesn't disrespect it. Yeah. Mm. And whichever setting that may be, it may be sitting in an office, writing you know, newspaper stuff about boring stuff. I don't mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it still reps. Yeah, it's reps. And it's it still has my name printed on it, yeah. mm-hmm. which means something, to yeah. me at least. Yeah. Um, totally. It means you existed. You yeah. were on the planet. Like yeah. someone cared about your work, yeah. you know, and that's kind of a buzz. It's still a buzz for mm-hmm. me. Yeah. The dream dream, I, I told myself when I first came here that I wanted to travel. I love to travel. I was in Egypt two years ago, and mm. I've been to Hawaii. Like, I just want to – I've had all these wonderful opportunities to yeah. exist outside of Jackson. And so I would love to travel, and I have, like, this little photography side gig that I do. And so I'd love to just write 
and I want to share other people's testimonies. I want, mm. I, I want to cry. I swear, I we've got Lord, please let it be for this girl. I just want to mm. indulge in other people's hearts because I know that I can get tired of hearing my own story. Mm-hmm. But just like you have your own, and I've heard bits and pieces about you and KK, and mm-hmm. I've heard bits and pieces about you, and so like getting to know somebody on such a deeper level and having an intense, deep conversation with somebody is something I I long for. Yeah, and I just want to use my writing abilities in some shape or form in that way. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't have to be perfect and well, and I, scripted. Mm. I see you doing that in terms of how you interview people, you know, and, and I can, I can feel it in the quotes that you get, you know, people feel safe and at home and honored with you and they share things with you of a deeper nature. Mm-hmm. And I think there are, there are many ways to be great at the writing game. Um, and that's really one of them you know, to, to honor people, to honor their stories. Um, I have no doubt that you're going to, that you're going to do this in your career. And it's exciting for people like Fran and myself who've kind of been around for a a large chunk of the journey. It's going to be, it'll be a tough graduation. You know, that's the occupational hazard in this business. When you're, when your friends graduate, you know, it's a sad, it's a sad night, but it's also, uh, pretty cool to see you guys become who you're supposed to be and I would just encourage you to take the big swings Mm -hmm. you know I always have this conversation with all my seniors at some point during their senior year and I think it's it's hardwired into them to want to be humble Um, and I have to push them to go let's start with Apex Mountain and work our way back Mm -hmm. you know and let's let's send the big email and take the big swing because you never know right yeah and speaking of that i uh <laughs> another realistic kind of dream dream mm-hmm. um sports yeah uh, i would love to get into sports writing yeah um i love watching college football i love, I love it there's jobs there there's I jobs know. to be had truly and i love like the interview content and like the press conferences afterwards. oh man and so, you think about people like aaron andrews mm-hmm. you know people that females that have paved a way for that's right females to have a voice mm-hmm. and yeah. a presence in the sports world mm-hmm. like yeah. yes avery you could do that <laughs> yep yeah you sure could and um you're gonna have a lot of a lot of skills and a lot of things you know how to do uh as a result of of being here and um yeah we're just grateful to be a part of it i'm telling you you have such a um you do you have such a unique story you are resilient. You are strong. You are very capable. You're very able. You're a beautiful example of how the Lord, nothing's wasted. Everything is used. And you've allowed him to do that. Mm. Mm. You have you have allowed him to uh, be Lord of your life and help you see the gifts. And I think it's so perfect and beautiful to receive those gifts and use your story through mm. those gifts. That's what we all want to be able to do. Your story yeah. is not separate from your gifts, and your gifts are not separate from your story. Everything is yeah. threaded together and, and meant to be used together. And you already see that and recognize that and very clearly articulate what you want to do. And I think the Lord will honor that. Yeah. He will honor that. I will say that it is nice to see the gifts and how far I've come. But, I mean, I'm, I won't lie. I'm an open book. Yeah. It's not been easy. Oh, I can yeah. imagine. It's... um. It's put a damper on me in some ways when it comes to relationships and allowing myself to receive love and mm-hmm. give love and mm-hmm. be fully present and enjoy and take in these college moments. Trust people. Yeah. To trust people. Yes. yes, to trust people. You know, I'm a very, um, I'm an independent woman. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I do send the big emails and I mm-hmm. make the phone calls and I deal yeah. with my insurance and, I, you know, it's just something that. I don't want maybe I don't want people to think oh she came from such a hard life and right now here mm-hmm. she is all right. beautiful and right no 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 it's messy it's, it's messy it's it very will always messy. be messy mm-hmm. well you don't ever want to have any part of your story be the whole story that's right no exactly. and it would be easy for that to happen in in your case but in some ways it would be easier for it would be easy for people to latch on to any part of our stories and make them you know the the kind of defining thing mm-hmm. but I think that. That is what's great about the the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, um, He's redeemed us. He's brought us from death to life. Um, he's changed your life, and if He began a good work in you, then He'll see it through to completion. And um, you know, we can find some some peace in that and some joy in it, knowing that like not every twist and turn in the journey is up to us. You know, and I'm not so concerned about 
where you go to work. Um, I would be more concerned with who you are in it, mm-hmm. you know, and um, and I it's it's sweet to me that you love the Lord mm-hmm. and that that's a part of your story. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you understand that it's a journey. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, like you're not you're OK. You're, yeah. you're not going to graduate and think, oh, I'm going to land in the most glorious, wonderful place it may happen Mm -hmm. but you aren't foreign or afraid to the concept of this is a process this is a journey oh no i I totally get that if if i didn't understand that there's no way that i would be sitting here right now yeah that's right you know i would have left you near my freshman year i never even probably would have went to college yeah yeah you know yeah it would have been so easy to give up at certain points yeah Yeah. or even i did at some points yeah yeah i did yeah What's the most fun thing you're learning right now in the classroom? What have you like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. I've never thought about that or considered that or understood that. That in any story that you write, you can intertwine bits and pieces of yourself mm-hmm. into the story. Mm-hmm. News piece, feature, yeah. you know, entertainment piece, it doesn't matter. You can intertwine bits and pieces of who you are as a person and even the Lord in some cases into your story mm. into the story you write mm. so i'm really proud of you oh thanks it's so fun to see how far you've come how the, how far you and the lord have walked together in just a short amount of time i mean these currently three years in the grand scheme of your life have gone by so quickly mm-hmm. but have been so significant and so powerful and so transforming you'll never ever ever forget what the Lord has done in this season, no matter how much time has gone by. You may not recall all the details, <laughs> but you have such significant work, significant moments in your life happening on this campus. I am so glad that you said yes to the Lord when the world and even yourself and others could have said, uh, Union, we want you to go to college, but Union may be a bit of a stretch. Yeah. You did it. I did You're it. doing it. Mm-hmm. I barely did it, but I did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I first came here, I didn't even know. I, <laughs> I, did, I missed all the emails about student ID and ticket parking. Yeah, it's okay. You know what? It all worked out. It's right. Yeah, it all worked out. I moved it in all on the right day. Out. For sure. It all worked out. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for being honest and telling us your story. I'm very grateful for you. Yeah, likewise. And Ted, you get her in the classroom often. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Can I be a journalism major? Come do it. Dude, it'll be like Rodney Dangerfield's back to school having <laughs> oh you in there. God. You know, that'd be exciting be for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Let's Talk About That. Y'all have a fantastic week. Oh, I love you, Avery Decker. I am so proud of you. Thank you for being on the show and sharing your very brave story. We are cheering you on, sister, all the way to the finish line. Okay, we would love to have you on campus. Yes, we would. You can sign up online. Just go to uu.edu and search Campus Visits. But if you've already done that and you just need to fill out an application, guess what? I've got a fee waiver code for you. Just simply fill out the application and type in the word TALK, all capital letters, T-A-L-K, in the appropriate place, and you do not have to pay the application fee. All right, everybody. Thanks again for listening. We appreciate you so much. Have a fantastic week.